Supernova! Welcome back, boys and girls, to another high-touch, high-tech science lesson with me, Mega Manoa. And today, we are going to be learning about our ears and how it is that we are able to hear. But before we do any of that, make sure that you grab the right bag for our experiment. In this case, we just need the bag. The bag that we need is the one that has the cups. That's the best way to find out what it is. But if you look a little bit deeper, there are some circly things called washers. There's a string, a rubber band, a kazoo, among other stuff. That's the only bag that we need to grab. Aside from that, we don't need anything else that is not included. However, you do need a partner. All right, so we need maybe mom or dad, your brother or your sister for one of the experiments that we're going to be needing for today. Okay, so that being said, do you know what these are? And yeah, that's our ear. And you know what it helps us to do? Ears help us hear? Exactly, yes, our ears help us to hear. All right, without them, we wouldn't be able to hear anything. And they are a part of our auditory system, basically what helps us to be able to hear. Although not all animals have ears, they have some sort of way of hearing. And it helps these animals even to protect them because for predators, right, they're, they're listening out for the prey there. Oh, he's over there. And then they pounce on him because they use their ears to hear. But at the same time, the prey is listening out. Oh no, where's the wolf? I don't want to be eaten today. Right, so they use their ears to hear and that protects them so that, you know, the, they could hear the predator ahead of time and they could run away. So how does your ear work, right? Even whenever you hear the sounds, the, you can't really see the sounds. So how does that work? Well, first, sounds are just waves, okay? They travel in waves, kind of like this. You see how my arms go, so they travel in, uh, as we call sound waves, we can't see it, but it goes into your ear. There's a little hole inside of there. And once it goes inside of the ear hole, which we call the ear canal, as you can see here, then it goes to the part of the ear called the eardrum. Now there are different parts of this. First, as you can hear, see here, there's a circular thing, which we call the tympanic membrane. So when the sound waves come towards it, it makes it vibrate. So it's, it's vibrating, but that's also connected to three pieces of bone, okay? Here we have the hammer and the anvil and the stirrup, but they're not just there. Remember from the tympanic membrane, it's kind of like shaking, but since they're all connected to each other, the tympanic membrane makes the hammer vibrate and pivot back and forth. And same thing to the anvil, it makes it also vibrate. And then finally to the stirrup, it also makes that vibrate a little bit as well. Finally, it goes, it goes to this last part, which it looks like a snail, doesn't it? This is called the cochlea. And that vibration that's coming from the eardrum, it makes this cochlea vibrate. And inside of the cochlea are these little tiny hairs called cilia, and they're both dancing, oh, moving around because of the vibrations. But from that movement, they, uh, the cochlea is able to send that message to your brain, okay? And tells your brain, oh, what does it say here? Oh, it says, hi, yeah. Or whatever it is that you're hearing, right? So it sends that finally to the brain. So again, the sound waves, right? The sounds which travel as waves go through your ear hole called the ear canal, right? Goes through the ear canal to the eardrum, the first part, the circly thing, it's called the tympanic membrane, it makes it vibrate, makes it shake, but that's attached to the hammer, which also makes that vibrate, and that, that vibration also translates even into the anvil, right? Makes that vibrate, and then also makes the stirrup vibrate, and then finally that vibration moves the cochlea, the snail-looking thing, and then sends the messages to your brain, and that's how you're able to hear. All right, so that's how it works. So you know what we're gonna do now? We are going to make ourselves an eardrum. Here we go. Now to make an eardrum, these are the parts that we're gonna be needing. Uh, grab the styrofoam cup, the rubber band, the bag of salt, we're gonna need this for the second experiment in what we're gonna be doing now. And finally, the fold top bag, the bag without the zipper. So these are the parts that we're going to be needing for the eardrum. So. Uh, first thing you want to do is you want to take the full top bag, open it up, stake your fingers, run it right inside of there so it's kind of open. 
and take your bag and make it a hat for our cup. There you go, Mr. Cup, you got a hat now. Okay, then what we want to do is you want to pull down that plastic part. Now while you're pulling down, try not to have a pointy side on the top. You want to have everything flat at the surface of the cup, or meaning the very top of the cup needs to be nice and flat. And if you pull it a little bit tighter, you can see it's nice and flat right there on the top. Once you pull it down like this, make it nice and flat, then just go ahead and take your rubber band, stretch it out through your fingers, that's what I like to do, and then just wrap it around and voila! We've got our eardrum. So how does it work? And why is this an eardrum? Well, first thing you could do is you could put this right next to your mouth and make a sound. So if I go like this, <laughs> yeah, that's what we're doing. We're just going closer and closer. If you make a sound, you have to make a sound. Don't just put it next to your mouth. Nothing's gonna happen. You have to make a sound. You have to make a vibration from your mouth. Remember, that's what sounds are, just vibrations. Okay, so. You hear that? It's making a sound, it's making a vibration. The surface of this is shaking, just like what happens inside of the eardrum. Remember, when the sounds go into the ear, it goes to the eardrum, but that first part of the eardrum, the tympanic membrane, which is what we have right here, it vibrates because of those sounds. And if you take a close look at it, you could see that the plastic part of this cup is actually shaking because of the sound waves coming from my mouth. Okay, take a look. You see that? You can see each of the different pieces of the uh, plastic just kind of kind of vibrating and shaking because of the sounds coming from my mouth. So that's a cool thing you could do, right? But that's not the only thing you could do with this. Uh, a second really cool thing is you could have a party, mm -hmm. a salt party, salt dance. So how are we gonna do that? Just take your salt and open it up. Now we don't want all of the salt. You want a little bit of salt at a time to be put on top of, the, uh, of our eardrum. Okay, and then we're just gonna put that right on there and nothing's happening right now because I'm not making a sound, but if I get close and I still make that ooh sound, whatever sound you make, then you're gonna start seeing that the tympanic membrane of my eardrum is going to vibrate and it's gonna cause my salt to dance. Watch this. Ooh. Is it and if you run out of salt that falls all over, then just put some more salt on top of there. It's okay to make a mess. No problemo. Let's do it again. I got some salt in my mouth. Now try different, what we call pitch. Maybe try a little bit higher or a little bit lower. Let's try. Let's see what happens. Yeah, try different ways, right? Here we go. Let me try a low one. Ooh. Let me try that one. Ooh. Ah. Also, what you could try is you could try to be soft. You could try to be loud. Let me try to be really soft. Ooh. Not much. What about loud? Ooh. Whoops. Yeah. Pretty cool, right? So this is our little tiny salt dance. So again, you could see that all of these little salt pieces are bouncing because of the surface of my eardrum here is vibrating because of the sound in my mouth. So that's why we call this an eardrum because it acts just like the tympanic membrane inside of your ear. As I mentioned before, sound travels in waves, right? But it travels through things, like it could travel through the air, it could travel through water, and even through solid objects, solid things. So in our next experiment, we're gonna see how good sound can travel through solid things like a string. So this time we're going to be making what I like to call a cup phone. What? Well, let me show you. Before we do that, we gotta have all of these uh, parts to make our cup phone. We need the two cups. They might have been together like this. Just take them out like that. There should be two pieces of tape, a string, 
and uh, two circular things, which we call washers, and a little stick, looks like a toothpick. All right, so those are all the parts, uh, parts that we're going to be needing to make this, but not included, you need a partner. All right, so maybe your brother, your sister, mom or dad, or grandpa, or grandma, anybody that you have next to you, we need them to hold the other side of the cup phone. So one side is gonna be talking, the other side is gonna be listening. So that is all that we're going to be needing. Make sure you grab a partner for all of this. So then let's make our cup phone. So to do that, uh, what we want to do first is we want to take the strings and find the end of the string. So you could try to unravel it already. If it's tied somewhere, then go ahead and untie it. Okay, so I'm just unraveling this string, making sure that there's no knot, as we call it. Okay, so I've unraveled it, and then we're going to find the end of one, and we're going to poke it through the hole of the bottom of this cup. So what I like to do is I like to kind of put the string over the hole, and take the stick and kind of push it through the hole so it goes inside of there. You see how I did that? So once I push it in, you could actually pull it from the inside of there. See it? Okay. So just pull it from the inside. And see how I did that? Okay, so once it's inside, don't pull it all the way, but with this part, the end of the string here, we want to tie that into our washers. So how do we do that? We just want to take it through the hole, okay, the end through the hole, and do that maybe about two to three times. Okay, so do that, and then we're gonna wrap it again through the hole by wrapping it around, okay, and then pull it through to the other side, and then maybe let's do it again for good measure. Now, it doesn't need to be too many times. I like to do it twice, just do it maybe one more time, a third time, in case any of you are doing it a third time. But after you do it this uh, third time, or however, however many times you're doing it, then we don't need to tie it. An easy way to just keep that there is by putting some tape on it, okay? So then I'm just gonna take my tape, grab your tape as well, and peel that off. Once you peel it off, then we're just gonna tape it right on top of that string and that washer, okay? So just have your string nice and tight onto there, put your tape right on top, wrap it all the way around, and you should be good. See, done, it's one side, okay? And then if you pull on the other side of the cup from the bottom so that the washer comes all the way inside, then the string's not gonna go anywhere because the washer is holding it in place, you see that? So it's holding it nice and in place inside of there. So this side is good. We're gonna do exactly the same thing to the other side of the cup. So then just go ahead and keep getting the string until you find the other side of the string, the other end. Then we wanna take that and poke it through the hole, right? So you just wanna take the string, not really the tip of the string, the end of the string, but I kinda of go a little bit lower than the end, keep it close to the hole, then take your, um, your stick and poke that through. See, just poke it through. And once you poked it through, then on the other side, you should find the string as well and just reach inside, pull it out. Okay, until the end comes all the way out. See, and then we're gonna do the same thing, right? Get your washer, put it through the hole, right? And pull it out and then same thing, pull it back and put it through the hole, making another loop. So here is my second loop. Maybe one more for good measure. And that's good. Okay, then like how we did with the other one, we're just gonna grab our tape and put it right on top, make it nice and easy for us. Uh, by the way, a really good way to open these pieces of tape, just find a corner and use your nail and pick at it so that it comes off nice and easy. And if you get the corner off, then it's a little bit easier to get the rest of that tape right off, just in case you're having a hard time with these pieces of tape, okay? Then, after you get the tape ready, then go ahead and put the tape right on top of all of the string that we just have right here. Put it right on top of there. And that is good. Okay, doesn't have to be very specific as to how, as long as the tape is holding the string. 
Okay, then same thing. We want to just put that inside while pulling on to this end. Then this is basically done. You got your cup phone. And remember, the point of this is we're going to see how good sound travels through a solid object, which is in this case, this string. Now, if your string is loose, like how mine is, you can't hear anything. Okay, you need to make sure that it's nice and tight nice and taut, as we call it, okay? So this is where you will need somebody else to help you out, okay? So one of you is gonna have it inside of one ear and the other one's gonna be talking on the other side over here. So here, let me give it to you here, okay? So, so you're gonna be putting it in your ear and then I'm gonna be having it in my mouth like this, okay? So then make sure that the line is nice and tight like this and then you make it sound. And then you'll probably, be, you'll probably be able to see that. But then after you finish doing that, then we do it the other way where I'm gonna put it in my ear and then say something, same thing. Oh, 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 oh. I could hear it. But remember, it only works if it's tight and not loose. If it's loose, you see how my string is loose? It's not gonna work, okay? So make sure that you keep it really nice and tight with your partner, okay? And that's the cup phone experiment. Now, people are not the only animals that are able to communicate with each other by American sounds. Well, insects also are able to communicate. Well, they don't talk like how we do. They don't do that. Instead, what they do is they rub their body parts together. Ah, like sometimes they might rub their legs or their abdomen or their wings. Ah, they would rub those body parts together and it would make a sound and they're able to communicate with each other. And that's what we call stridulation. What is stridulation? Great question! Stridulation is again just taking their body parts and rubbing them together. And when they rub them together, it makes a sound that might mean hello! I don't know, I don't speak insect. Or uh, another type of sound might mean, you know, might warn their friends if there's a predator coming, right? So, different types of things that they could communicate with by just rubbing their body parts together. Okay, so in our next experiment, we're going to use vibrations to make a sound. All right, so we're gonna make some sounds by making some vibrations just like the insects do their stridulation, right? They just rub their body parts together to make a sound, to communicate with one another. So to do this, we gotta grab one of these, the kazoo. That's it. Okay, so the way that this works, first off, is you gotta put it to your mouth. There are two parts. There's a little skinny part and there's a wider part, right? So you wanna put your mouth to this wide part. And if you put it to your mouth, and if you make a sound, you get. You see that? But, word of warning, do not just blow. If you just blow, if you just go like this, nothing's gonna happen. You have to make a sound like ooh, like the eardrum, right? You have to make a sound ooh. You hear that? You have to make a sound. Don't just blow. Nothing's gonna happen. So you gotta make a sound, okay? But remember, insects, they have some sort of way to communicate. So maybe hello would be or if they're trying to warn against a predator, they might go I don't know. I don't speak insect, they make it up, right? So that's how they're able to communicate, right? Just by making sounds like that, by rubbing their body parts together to make that type of sound. I don't know how to speak insect, okay? But that's a cool thing that you can do with your kazoo. All right, now in any case, guys, I hope you guys had a lot of fun with these and for our final thing, we could do this all together. You can do this with me, march along with me, along with my fellow Mega Minoans, as we do our uh, marching out. 